right. Welcome to the This That Podcast, episode 136. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thanks for tuning into the show. Weekly, every weekend, every week, it's, well, I think it's Friday or Saturday that this drops, you know, it depends on scheduling over here with my team when I, I let Svetlana, Daniela, Steph, Bianca, like do all of the invoicing and the uploading and stuff like that and whenever they choose to, but I try to aim for a Friday, how's everyone feeling on their Friday afternoon, beautiful Australia. Uh, I'm looking at the camera and my one shoulder is higher than the other. I mean, there's another doctor that I need to go and see now. Osteopath, some Cairo, some shonk that's going to look at me and, and pretend to fix me. Uh, to be honest, you know, the more and more I age and the more doctors I see, the less they're fixing me. They, they don't fix. Some comedian once goes, everything after 38 years old is just palliative care. You don't get better. You just pay people for them to tell you what you have and then to, to let you go because there's another guy waiting in the room to in the waiting room to get his ass handed to him for five hundred and sixty dollars minus some Medicare rebate, which is ends up coming to four hundred and nineteen dollars. Uh, so he gets a little there's only a four hundred dollar gap for the some of these specialists. Four hundred bucks. So Medicare gives them a hundred and they go, Do you know what? The Merck, AMG, GLE, C sixty three, fucking A B C D the repayments are huge. The waterfront looking over the Pacific Ocean, gap it 400. I only have 14, you know, patients today. So it's a little bit of money. Five, six K a day keeps the, you know, AMP away. But I uh, don't know how I've gone there. You opened a podcast, as we know, every week. You don't know which rabbit hole the Vladis Doddle's going to take you down, but you willingly go down for the trip and you enjoy yourself, bro. I was listening to a couple of old podcasts. Now, I'm starting to write for the new tour that's starting. I've, I've booked every venue, by the way, so a round of applause. The man has done it himself. He's done it himself. And not only have I done it on myself, I've done it to the biggest and best venues. And, I mean, there's a testament to if you put your mind to something, and I'm a scattered freak, so if you put your mind to something, you can get it done. If your heart's in it, you can see it through. And I've got the conscientiousness of a stone Chinese man in an opium te temple. Yeah, so it's, it, it, to me, it's like almost unbelievable that I, I saw this through. But I'll give you a tip about anyone that's out there trying to get anything done in the year 2023. You basically have to wind the clock back to 1989 again and pick up the phone. Call people. Don't expect a response via email, bro. Especially if the people you're reaching out to are busy. If they're busy and you expect some person with the motivation level, again, of a Chinese person in an opium temple. temple let's start that again. So I can't say the opium temple because I've never used those two words in succession ever in my life. If you've got the motivation of a sedated possum that's been injured by being run over by a Dodge Ram, uh, some construction worker's car they spent 250 grand in, just so he doesn't even carry tools anymore, he just tells people what to do, but he still needs the biggest car on the thing. If you've got that level of motivation, you need to pick up the phone because there's no chance that you're getting responses from anyone at any type of timely fashion. They just can't be bothered or they, they always hide behind of the veil of we're, we're swamped, we're too busy, we're swamped, we're too busy. But you send him a text message on WhatsApp or on Instagram, it gets the two blue ticks, the red ticks, very quickly. They see everything because while they're pretending to be swamped, the right hand is getting uh, fucking uh, de Quervain's disease in there from being on the phone for so long. They need cortisone injections because they're on social media so long. I don't know many people that are that swamped doing anything in the corporate world. So pick up the phone, relentlessly call these morons, and and sometimes through through a private number, go to a to a payphone. Those ones now they're free now the payphones, and call off that. And you go, hello, and you go, Ken, is that you? Yeah, gonna how are you? Man? Who's this by the way? Who's this? They're all spun out because they actually have to speak. And you go, D this is Vlad, in the guy and Vlad from Mrs. Proprietary Limited Productions. I'm here to book the tour, you know, like this is my third tour. We've been selling out theatres left, right and centres and we're going to come back with a bigger, better and more immaculate tour. Do you want the business or not? Do you want to make 25k in a night? Yeah, I made 25k in the last six months, but do you want to make it in a night? And they're like, oh, sure, not a problem. Yeah, actually, I <laughs> look at that. You've gone to the junk folder. 
Yeah, I've gone to the junk folder. Yeah, you've gone to the junk folder, man. Sorry, man. And you're like, yeah, now we're going 1989 on you, bro. We're going to call you balls to the wall. Talk now. Tell me the excuses now. Uppity, uppity, uppity. Doesn't know what to say. And you go, give me a date, you row. And he'll go, oh, I actually got this date, that date, and that date. Would you like me to put a pencil on it? Yes, put a pencil on it. Put a fucking texter on it. Been chasing you since the, the 17th of November 2022, bro. Look at this. Five months have gotten, six months soon have gone by. But tips out to anyone that's trying to get anything done. It's all about phone conversations. Do not text. Do not email. You're going to come back to me one day, and as you do, and you're going to go to me, Vlad, I took your advice, bro. I ended up calling that girl that I liked, and I go to her, hey, um, what name are we going to go with now? Hey, Isabella, how are you? And she'll go, hi, who's this? And you'll go, me, man, it's Patty, bro, Patrick. And she'll go, what's going on? Why are you calling me? You know, I'm used to being able to hide behind a phone and text you and send box shots on Snapchat. And you go, no, 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 we're going to have a chat. What are you up to? She's like, this is strange. It's like my 40-year-old uncle's calling me now. And you go, that's right. I've got the brain of your 40-year-old uncle, but I'm clothed in a 24-year-old shredded and tattooed up body. You know, and she'll go, okay. Oh, and she'll, she'll try to get out of it, but you'll be like, look, I just really want to go and meet you. I really want to see you. Let's go down to the Bicentennial Park, take a picnic blanket out and have a couple of duck sushi wraps. Do that. Startle her with your balls to be able to communicate because there's no chance these days that anything's getting done via, well, not a lot, so let me just put that. There's a little sliver. Yes, you can do some things, but not all. Go in and see the council when you're building, bro. I had to go in and put a, a development application in for a driveway. You got to do that over an email? No, I went and had a chat with Mahmoud at the front. Mahmoud, he was at the front. He was being very nice to me. And then once we sp spoke, he found out, obviously, it's Vlad, the immaculate and all of that. Two, three weeks later, approvals, bro. He told me it's a three-month waiting process. I was like, it's not acceptable with three months. You guys are doing shit all but eating pad thais at lunch. You guys have got to put the work in is what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're not busy, but I'm just saying the work, the time to work ratio is catastrophic. I know it because I've been in corporate world, not corporate, but business world uh, for 20 years. Uh, people, are, there's a lot of, oh, yeah, I'll meet you at the restaurant soon instead of I can't. I need to eat a sushi wrap here on the table and get back to these people. There's a lot of the hierarchy of pleasure to work is very, very low in Australia at the moment. And I'm generalizing and you could come and combat me and say, now you're very busy working at Suzanne Gray, giving different extra large size dresses to women that are coming in on Friday because they're going out to a brunch or a luncheon on the weekend. Yes, all right, exception here. But if I'm just going to go out on a limb like I always do, it's not much being done. So you need to basically call these people. Don't know how, I do not know how I went down this rabbit hole. It is what it is. It is the Vladis Toro, it's the Vladis in Wonderland rabbit hole. We've gone down there, you know it. Uh, it happens weekly. Here's another rabbit hole for you. My missus ends up texting me this morning at 7.05 and she goes, babe, I've left, uh, I've left for work and I've taken your car. Straight away the stress level goes up, the tinnitus starts. And I was, I'm just in a slumber, laying in bed, looking at painted white ceilings, the boringest decor on earth, looking up. My daughter's next to me. She's got her legs kicking my lower back where the, where the slip nerve is, the slip disc. And... I'm looking up going, why is my car? I've got everything in my car. I'm doing podcasts, got my wallet in my car, my son is in my car. I've got my surfboard in my car, a bunch of different recreational equipment in my car that I need. And she's like, no, I've taken your car. You take my car. I have two busted tires on the left-hand side. Now, she didn't say I have two punctures in my tires. The terminology she uses, used, uses is busted tires. Do you know how hard it is to bust a tire? It's 2023, we've got thick rubber radial tires, run flats. They run flat, these things. You can machete them and you can still drive it up to 80k an hour. She busted them. Now, I'm sitting there, stress up, but then again, the other side of my brain is like, adapt, Vlad. Go with the flow. 
You've watched their car toll one sitting down next to some white lilies in a room of 6,000 people, made 280 grand that night, plus tax. And and you're worried about this? No, you're going to adapt. You're going to dress the kids, feed the kids, make the lunches, drop the kids off, all in a car that's like the Flintstones, that's basically on fucking rocks, going in the local area and you're you're a local hero now so you've got to you've got to be seen in a mini cooper driving around like that with half the car tipped over to the side like fred fred flintstone when he's eating it with his wife so i end up just getting up going with the flow first thing i did was just walk outside to assess the level of bustedness in these tires now it's a beautiful car. It would have been beautiful if it was driven by, uh, I'm not going to say man, woman, gender, none of this, but a person that respects automobiles, that has a little bit of sympathy for thy vehicle, sympathy for thy machinery, okay? Now, my car gets washed weekly. I'm not going there three times a week like real estate agents that literally don't have anything to do but sit there texting their mates and they use it as an excuse that they need to have a clean car for clients that they never get in there anyway. But... I was like, once a week, I looked at my missus, once a year, there was mold growing in the boot. Under two yoga mats that she's got in the boot, and I'm throwing her under the bus. And you should be listening to this, baby. If you're listening to this, you're getting out to 10,000 people. One of you guys should have a chat to her. Anyway, there's mold growing in the back of the car. The car's lopsided. There's two busted tires. Two busted tire. Not two busted tires, but... To bust the tire, there's a word wrap for you, you need to go over two landmines for it to bust. Like, uh, the, the, the gutters themselves, they've done a great job. Now, I took it to Bob Jane t -Marts. The guy, Bob Jane, looks like my father-in-law. So I took it there, and he goes, oh, Pirelli p zeros, all right. Jeez, is this your car, mate? And I was like, no, nah, it's my wife's car. And he goes, hmm. <laughs> She's done. She's had a go at the gutters, eh? And I was like, she hates gutters. It's like in her past life, uh, she used to be a strip of land and, and the government came along and put gutters and she couldn't, you know, grow further on. So she was bounded by them. And this life, she's come back as a, a person that owns a car and it remembers something just attracts it to her. It's like the, it's the old warfare between the Chinese and Mongolians. There's something there that's always just going to be tension, Right. So he goes, oh, Jesus Christ, I mean, the state of it. I go, don't remind me, bro, there's mould in the boot. It's a fucking biohazard when you walk. You've got to wear those masks, you know, that when you go into uh, places where there's been nuclear war in this car. You know, I drive with every window open plus the sunroof. The breeze in there is like a fucking hurricane's coming through while I'm driving. The hair's going in every direction. It's a hazard to drive, actually. So I was like... All right, no problem. What do we have to do? He goes, mate, I can't get these tires. These are a specialty tire. Uh, you can give me a couple of hours. I go, there's surf's going off. Uh, I'm not waiting two hours. I'll drive this shit on, on these rock square tires, that uh, rims that it's become now, because she's been driving on the run flats for two days, by the way. So uh, I just go, I'm just going to drive this thing to the beach and I'll find a, a tyre mart on the way to the beach. It's a 10 kilometre drive. Let's go. I'm doing 20 kilometres an hour. The amount of stressed out mums in the morning beeping at me and tradies, beeping, fingers out of the window. Some guy was going to throw his vape through the window at me. Oh, I couldn't point like down. Look, look over here on the passenger side. I'm driving on, on square rock wheels like the Flintstones. I'm driving on rims, so I just had to basically hack it. So I got to a place, and he goes, mate, it's a minimum hour. I go, bro, I'm going to leave the car. I'm going for a surf. So I end up going for a surf, come back, the car's ready. $900 for two tyres that are going to get busted within the next three months. I know it. That tyre is going to be looked after four to six hours, and then the sheen will wear off. And then it's just, there's a gutter. Oh, it's a nice fresh gutter. Oof, straight into it. Oh, I like that gutter. Is that where we go in with the driveway where it dips down? No, I'll go over the gutter in there. Oh, right, shit on. Totally sledging the wife today. Totally sledging the wife. I'm going to get smashed for this. And I know she'll listen to the podcast. She doesn't listen to any podcast, but she will listen to this. This will somehow get sent to her through my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, or my mother-in-law probably listens, my dad listens to it. Someone's going to put it in and say he's got some pertinent information here in, re in respect to the car, the state of the health of the car. 
please listen to it. And there's not going to be much taken from this except for, wow, you've attacked me on a public forum. <laughs> How can you talk about that? <laughs> sorry, babe, I can't be sorry. But I've got sympathy for that poor car, bro. If that car had like a voice, if I put this microphone to that car and it's like, boy, help me. The cops came over the other night and my missus had her car in the driveway, lights on, 8.30 p.m., lights on, engine running. I didn't know that. We're having dinner, I hear. And I get up, I go, who knocks like that except for my dad and the cops? I walk up and I go, who is it? And you hear, police! Shit myself. I shut myself. I go, if this bloke, when I open the door, is asking for me, I'm a faint right now. Like, what have I done? So I open the door and I go, hello, is everything all right? All right, it's a guy copper and a girl copper. They're like in their 30s, call it. And they go, hey, how are you? We're just looking for number three. Uh, number three A, actually. And I go, oh, this is number three. And they go, oh, okay, do you know where number three A is? And I was like, actually, there's, it's on the other side of this street like you've got to go oh, oh they're very lovely <laughs> smiling oh wow my daughter runs up next to me she goes whoa who are I? why are the police here dad i was like i don't know bro they're looking for a thing you know and she goes okay hello how's that going and they're like hey how are you and she goes are you the police you're not coming to do my brother is the one making trouble in there he's the one making trouble and i was like don't, don't tell him didn't stitch him up she, she goes okay sorry he didn't do anything wrong he's eating all his dinner now and then you hear my, my son yell, oh, did I, did I, in the background. And then I go, let me show you where it is. So as I go to walk off the porch with them, leading them, like a good Samaritan, they, the female copper points to my missus's car and she goes, um, the lights are on. And I go, huh, yeah. She goes, I think the engine's on. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I think it is, like that. And she goes, is it? It meant, meant to be like this? And I go, it's my, it's my wife's car. And I kind of lowered my head in, in, in kind of embarrassment. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's my wife's car, I'm not saying. And they both start giggling. And I go, maybe you guys can go in there and have a chat to her. Let's get it, let's get it. Angel Grove, I said it's Toys and Collect. I said, go, go and buy some Toys and Collect. How fucking Toys and Collect? Spider-Man. My favourite, my son's favourite. A uh, Fireman, Dad. It's Fireman, Dad. Have a look on the screen. Marvel Comics, Spider-Man. Uh, this is a collectible. It's worth a few hundred bucks now. Jump on to angelgrovecollectibles.com uh, and get yourself a discount of 10%. angelgrovecollectibles.com. They've got Power Rangers, Dragon Ball, the Marvel. They've got DC. They've got Pokemon, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Demon Slayer, One Piece, uh, Naruto, and My Hero Academia. They've got uh, anime stuff. They have an official Band Presto store. Um, they've got Hasbro, bro. Uh, so make sure you get onto angelgrovecollectibles.com and get yourself a stitch. Awesome sponsor podcast sponsors for about eight, two years coming up now. So support the supporters that support the podcast. Anything to do with figurines, action figures, nostalgia from the 90s, the 2000s, jump onto angelgrovecollectibles.com. Discount code is Vlad for 10% off. Make sure you do it. Today's the last day, by the way, for their $400, disc, uh, $400 prize. If you jump on March the 31st and order something, you get in the running for 400 bucks. Cash back guarantee. So uh, go and do it. Um, legends at Angel Grove Toys and Collectibles rap. I said, Bruce, it's, it's so convenient. Yeah, it's just a convenient. Oh, oh. You know, nice high pitch there. The number one US snack food plug, Bruce Super. Dot com dot au. Bruce Super dot com dot au. Some of the best things that you'll ever find. Fat kids snacks over there, but for sure not people. So get on to brucesuper.com.au. You can follow him on Instagram. It's Bruce Super Convenience. Find him. He's got 16,000, 17,000 followers. Does weekly giveaways. He will give you 10% off if you type in the code VLAD. 
He ships around the whole Australia um, and he does it fast. And plus, if you add in Vlad, he'll give you free stuff on top of the 10% discount. So that's that's worth using that code Vlad, V-L-A-D, in the discount code, in the checkout. Go and have a look what they got. Stuff from around the whole world, snacks, drinks, chips, lollies, chocolates, um, stuff for Easter, for Christmas, from China, from Japan, from Mongolia. I'm going to say Mongolia again, just to keep it inclusive, to Russia. Maybe not Russia. From the United States, from, you know, Turkey. So go and have a look. He doesn't sell actual turkeys on there, basted and cooked. But, you know, he might sell some Euro creme that was made in a Turkish warehouse. So go to www.brucesuper.com.au and support the supporters that support the... Code is Vlad. Orange legal grain. Absolute champions from Victoria, the number one conveyances, anything to do with property, you've got to see the one-stop shop, the house that has it all, the house that houses them all. Three things that they crack in there is a lawyer that specializes in conveyancing, so purchasing and selling, and then you've got an accountant, chartered, and then a mortgage broker as well. Three, they do everything to do with properties, all right? So get in there, orangelegalgroup.com.au. If you're in Melbourne, call them, 8317-1070, 8317-1070. Email them, property at orangelegalgroup.com.au. Legends of the podcast, sponsors for two years. You need to go and mention Vlad, this, that podcast. Hey, man, got your number from Vlad. Got your number from Vlad. Got your email from Vlad. Thinking about buying, thinking about selling. Help me stitch, help me wrap. Orange Legal Group, many gladiators have gone through them and love the experience. There's nothing better in this world than a referral. And one of my old bosses had on his business card, the greatest compliment I can receive is a referral from a client to another client. That's the greatest thing. So from us to Orange Legal Group, make sure you mention Vlad so they know that you're coming from this and they support this podcast. So support them. Questions from Vlad. Angela goes, another email one. When you're working hard for something in life, for example, making a career change, and you're just getting obstacle after obstacle thrown at you, how long do you keep going? Is it a test of grit and character, or is it what you're working towards, or is it what you're working towards not meant for you? Yeah, this is um, it's a good question, bro. Oh man. That's tough. Like, uh, it is. Look, it's to be the shittest, most vanilla, fence sitting political answer I can give you. And I don't want to. I want to be able to draw the hard line here, Angela. I really do. But, uh, I mean, being a, a cynical realist, uh, at the same time, you've got to take in. I've, I'm like Jordan Peterson now. Well, there's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more to it. You can't just say that. And, and he's right. Like, there is, there's a lot. It's not black and white. The whole world is grey, so everything is is smoke and mirrors. And this particular thing is it a test? Yes. Firstly, it's a test of grit and character. Yes. Um, and two, are you in the wrong game? Also, yes. So let me let me have a look here. You're you're getting obstacle after obstacle thrown at you. How long do you keep going? Well, there's no such thing as a as time, right? If you're living in the now, like Eckhart Tolle said, there's no such thing as time, bro. It's like, you know, just live in the now, live in the now. But he also did say he sat on a park bench for three years and peeled tomatoes. So I don't know what to believe with this bloke. But I would say you give you give up when that realisation comes to you that you don't need this or want this anymore, right? And then... Believe me, whatever you're building, career, uh, relationship, family, lips, hips, teats, whatever you're building, it's all bullshit in the end. And truly, I tell thee, it's all bullshit in the end and all of this will just dissipate into nothing. It's another entertainment of thy ego. Like this is, like what I'm doing is, like the real estate agent that goes up and receives the award because he sold 50 properties in the world and now he thinks he's Hulk Hogan living in Campbelltown. Like the person that is on Instagram with 3 million followers and contributed nothing towards society except for putting a moisturizer on and showing the outline of a box bent over like to pick up a pair of shoes. It... It's all just bullshit in the end. 
true? Yes or yes. All right. And that's that's first thing you should know that. Because if you know that, it gives you a lightness to it. And it's easier said than done because we do live in a reality and reality is like quite intoxicating. But I would definitely say if you have that mindset, you become lighter. And that's a more buddhi- a, a religious mindset probably you know it's it's all passing it's a fart in the wind so you've you've got to have a lighter approach to it obstacle after obstacle after obstacle is going to get thrown at you no matter wh- what you do no matter what you do whether you want to start up a, an art company whether you want to be a real estate agent or whether you want to uh, be a beautician it's going to be obstacle after obstacle uh, such is life right uh, y- you can't the difference is you've got to at least enjoy or be decent at what you're doing. It's got to come to you. Uh, I would say naturally it's intuitive. It's something that come to you. It's like putting me now to be, um, let's say, a doctor. Put me as a doctor 12 hours a day, can't go and surf on my lunch break. Gonna kill me, right? It, it's just gonna, it's gonna eat me up. I can't do it. Don't care enough about anything to do that. I don't care about the outcome. Don't care about the esteem. Don't care about the label. So for me, it's just gonna be tough, grinding under these halogen lights, fluorescent lights in a inside all day. I'm dealing with a bunch of like semi-autistic people because they're very smart, and you know you can say that because a lot of smart people are autistic, right? But whatever, that's their own problem. And then going out like. Every now and then, that's not the way I want to run my life. So it's it's just trying to put a lion to be an elephant or the other way around or making a fish drive a car, as Jerry Seinfeld said. So it's you, you just can't pretend it. So, But put me in front of the camera or a bunch of people, I can rip. We all know that. That's why thousands, 10,000 tickets sold. We know that. But you've also got to understand this is tough. This is battle after battle after obstacle after obstacle or you think it's it's a walk in the park to be constantly writing filming shooting thinking about um where to to make money from where to tour how to grow how to impress how to solidify yourself in the industry that you're at dealing with these booking agent uh humans and all of this stuff this is challenge after challenge however it's easier because I dig the sport, so that's part of it. That's a driving factor. You put Tiger Woods in, you know, 50-metre swimming races, doesn't like her, give him a putting wedge, a putting, a putter or a chipping wedge, he can sit in the sand for hours. Even though it's windy and hot and raining, he'll, he'll still chip away. That's a tough obstacle to get to where he got to. I mean, he pounded a lot of Scandinavian women, but at the same time, at least he loved the sport. So at least he felt like he should fit in. I don't know what the right terminology is because all I can hear is a bunch of uneducated smart people that are out there just going, no, it's not like that, Vlad. You just got to work. You just got to work. Look, everyone's got to contribute something, bro. And the way I look at it, it's better to contribute less at something you're good at and do it greatly than contribute a lot in something you're shit at and do it poorly. And that's a quote, right? And I, I, I think people have may have truncated that quote into like six words, but I said it in about 28. So, I mean, it's a long way around the block for me. Doesn't matter though. So if you love your career change, if you've gone from being a nurse to becoming a... I don't know, kebab wrapper. You want to open a kebab store, Angela. You love that. Stick with it because the joy is in the process, as Gary Canavy would say. Enjoy the process. That way you don't get pissed off that the results uh, fluctuate. You've got to go with the process. For me, for real estate, the process is shit. Get up in the morning, uh, unnaturally have to go to sit into a meeting drinking a double shot almond latte getting stressed out sitting there for two and a half hours talking about a whole bunch of properties that i do not care about and listing for other people's listings by the way i did care about the ones that i had under my wing but sitting there and the whole thing's an act found very difficult as i got into my middle ages to be able to handle that and people go it's a job you've got to do it you've got to do it no you don't 
Because three years of not doing it, everything's good. It's better. The people that are in the office are better without me. You know, get in where you fit in because it's crucial. And that's a, that's a line from uh, Outcast. Is it a te- but you always got to understand that everything's a test of grit and character and things are going to fold you and buckle you and that's all right. You just pop back up, just stand back up and you keep going, enjoy it. And then something you loved for so long may get superseded by something that you never thought would happen, right? And that's just being allowing some uh, some flow to happen, a, a change to happen. For for me, it was like always, it's not real estate. For me, it was, real estate was just paying the bills. For me, it was like always music. As we know, you, this basically is to Phil Collins with a full flock. But it was a lot of music, 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 working tirelessly for a dozen years at music to get little blips on the radar. Call money. No money. Forget about money. Forget about even fans. But just working, working so it can build up some type of thing. Maybe we didn't do it right. It's not God's plan. That's the way I'm going to put it. I'm going to pop it in the bucket with God's plan. Okay? Because no matter how much I tried to plan it, this shit wasn't working. So then once that broke up and I totally accepted it, I accept not being a musician in a band anymore. Who cares, Bear? Was the thing that was going in my head. A year and a half went by and something new started. And that's the best advice I can give you. Stay chat. No. Questions for Vlad. We've got Anthony here, goes. Send me an email. I love your podcast. I'm just going to give myself a bit of a pat. And you're a modern-day philosopher for our time. Bladders Dotto, I've said this before. Your advice regarding trusting your gut uh, when it comes to women really resonated with me. But I have a di- dilemma here. There's a girl, 30, I work with. <clears throat> and I briefly dated. I really like her with all her faults. And my gut tells me we'd be great together long term. Unfortunately, she doesn't want a relationship with anyone. She wants to remain independent. Okay, we'll see how long that goes, bro. You're 30, you won't be able to hack yourself by 35. Trust me. All of your insufficiencies are going to come out. This is not what he's written, but this is just a side note from me. After telling me this, she has become distant. She does my head in. Yeah, it's awkward, bro. She does my head in, but I still think of ways to make... I I still think of ways to make things work. Okay, imagination station right there. I've listened to you to your earlier podcast and you mentioned how persistent you had to be to win over your Mrs. Proprietary Limited, who was initially cold towards you. And she wasn't cold. She was just like kind of bland, lukewarm, vanilla, whatever. Would you advise me to keep trying after giving her some space, perhaps in a couple of months, or move on? Regards. All right, Anthony, um, again, I'm not a specialist, I'm not Dr. Phil. But I would definitely say, just from my experience, and I'm not like Hitch, like Will Smith, before he ended up knocking out Chris Rock, he did a movie called Hitch where he set people up and he had all of this advice, even though his missus was giving headjobs to people and then she revealed it on a roundtable book talk or whatever it was for the whole world to snicker at. Uh, he had a movie called Hitch, but in, when, unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, uh, matters of the heart are a very personal thing and you have to be able to trust your instinct. Um, head, yes, as well. You can't just be completely instinct and then, you know, you, you go, my gut feels really, I really need her and then you walk in and she's getting drilled by the Canterbury Bulldogs. You know, off-season, consensual. So don't come at me saying that I'm, you know, endorsing any type of behaviour, but she could be like some a whore of the highest degree with an OnlyFans, but you still, your gut still wants her. Your head should kick in at some point, you know what I mean? Your head's a backup system to the gut. The gut is the initial spark. That's the way I go. The chain goes, the gut, instinct, intuition, chain up to the head, up to the head. The head comes filtration station. And then comes out of the mouth or actions out of the other, or, you know, phalluses. So I would say to you, in regards to this, there's a girl who's 30 and then she goes, uh, she doesn't want a relationship. She wants to be remain independent. 
there. She just told you. She wants to remain independent. The last thing you can do, bro, is try to sway someone against their will. What do they say? A man, or in this case a woman, forced against her will, will remain of the same opinion still. You don't force anyone. It's almost slowly, slowly catchy monkey is the saying that I've, I've heard some British people say. Um, you've, got to, you've got to make yourself attractive enough for her to want to come to you. Um, but if you kind of uh, wrap or stitch her around to come to you, then it's not going to end well either. Like case in point here for my missus, right? I met her um, in October 20, 2006. Like I've been with her for, a, for my whole life basically. Uh, 2005, she wasn't keen on me. She saw me playing live in the band, long hair, looking like Alice Cooper, uh, doing all these rock songs and stuff. She thought I was a loose cannon. She was very right. Her gut instinct was completely right. And then I saw her again in November and then I, I didn't ask her out. I just had a chat to her and she was just chatting to me normally. Like she wasn't that keen. She was just like, ah, oh, it's just some buff headed wog that plays a guitar and sings um, songs that I'm not interested in. And, but I was interested in her and I was just very soft on the touch, right? So I got her number through a friend without her consent and then I threw a few text messages at her. Hey, I met you, I'm the guy on stage, Alice Cooper. And she was like, oh, hi, very nice, very respectful. How are you doing? And we got a chain of SMSs back and forth. But I could feel she wasn't really that keen. But she was just very respectful and nice, which is a nice way of saying I'm not interested in you. Right, and then I kind of left it for a while, started going left with several other girls, right? Just getting – but every now and then I check in. Hey, what's going on? I found out that she plays violin, so I asked her. I've got tickets from a client of mine that I wrapped the house – that plays in Sydney Symphony Orchestra. I know, <coughs> know that you're a violinist. Would you like to, and I'm a guitarist extraordinaire, uh, some guy virtuoso, I'm not, I can barely play the chords, but, you know, at least come out and say this with me. And she was like, oh, that's really, I'm studying at the moment. She hasn't stopped. Uh, and I've just, I won't be able to do it. Sorry. So it's a nice way of saying oh, I'm not really that keen, right? So I left it. Several months went past. I asked again couple months later like I'm given a breathing space because I don't want, I don't want to be a despo bro no one wants a despo so you want to be the person that she wants to be with which you can't make yourself that available you just have to be getting on with your life striving driving thriving and then you project that in your mannerism and she'll be like this guy is a machine bro I want to I want to I want to go left you know I want to go right and centers so you've got that you've got that desirability to you, right? And it's not a tactic either way. So if you think that I'm some dickhead from New York that just goes that has no moral ethic compass, moral or ethical compass, and just goes out smashing women left, right, and center, I'm not. I'm just saying generally in life, it's more attractive for a woman to go with a guy or be attracted to a guy that's just enjoying himself, confident in himself, and growing and doing things. And you and you're not desperately hunting. You gotta show her you like her, but at the same time, if it's not you, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna keep going. You know, no one wants to see you crying at the dinner table. Please, I'm gonna. I can't live without you. No, it's only in movies. So I, I tried and tried and tried it, and then it got to a point where I was. I saw her at church, and um, because we had common friends, so I saw her. I was like, "What's going on? How are you? Nice to see you." Now I was dazzled up, looking immaculate. Just in regular clothes. I didn't go and buy Gucci and put myself in some debt on Afterpay to impress people that don't like me. I just went out with a nice white shirt, little black pants, a little shoe from Hush Puppies. Doesn't matter, the hair flickering, nice little sunnies. Go over there, said hi to her. She was like, hi, little warmer, got a bit of a job, made her laugh a little bit. Blah, blah, blah. Follow up with a text message the next day. Nice seeing ya. How about that symphony? She was like, nah. Maybe not a symphony, maybe we can grab a lunch. And I was like, let's go with the lunch. This is again, this is all, it's all gonna happen in the same, I'm answering this question and giving you my example. We went to the lunch, <laughs> shut the gates, bro. Uh, shouted her a six inch fucking chicken schnitzel from Subway. That's all, all it was. I'm not taking her to Nobu. I would have never had kids and been married with her if I had taken to Nobu because it's all downhill from there. When I went through the period of uh, driving in a courier and could barely make rent and every time I went to pay for a dinner, I used to say, uh, sorry, insufficient funds, you've got you to build up. 
So I end up getting the subway. The trick of this be a bit of bit of a tight ass. Women don't mind it, bro. At least people, women that are low fucking maintenance. You don't want these girls pumped up lips, hips, and tits that need to be taken to China Doll every weekend with a six hundred forty dollar for a couple of slivers of raw tuna hasn't even been cooked. What are the chefs doing? Anyway, so I ended up getting her that way, but. It all came through being kind, being slightly persistent, and then when I met with her, connecting with her. But if I was working with her and then she got, she got, I've had flings in the past at work, bro, like prior to the missus. They never work out well. They never work out well. You, they say don't shit where you eat, but whatever, there's a reason for that. The other thing I was going to say is the, when I met, when I started going out with my missus, I was kind of seeing another girl at the same time. So I wasn't that interested. I was like keen, but if it doesn't happen, I'm also happy. And she noticed that vibe in me. She knew it. So she could see that I wasn't like, you know, hung, too hungry for her. So I was just like, I'd like to hang out. Let's do it if you're keen, blah, blah, blah. And then that kind of works for me. That's just my example, bro. And uh, I would say for you, give her space, definitely. Give her space, work on yourself, grow for yourself. Uh, she's not the last person on earth, uh, even if you like her a lot. Not the last person. And by the way, as you grow older, sometimes you can look back and go, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? So, um, Jesus Christ, this, this entire podcast is about the missus. What am I going to call this? They're going to call this the missus and the busted tires. The missus busted her tires. Something like that. I'm, fi- dude, I'm finished. I'm going to have to apologise for years for a podcast like this. Anyway, it's all us, the lover. You know, so good luck, brother. If you've got a business, just go keep it safe. You've got to get the troubles, got to get the hackers, got to get these mongrel lights on when you need virtuosas. Virtuosis, bro, helping businesses balance productivity and cybersecurity. I've said it to you before, bro. Legends in the IT game, please contact Virtuosis, V I R T U O S Y S, dot com, dot AU. When it comes to your business's online security and productivity, these guys are going to look after you on a price thing. They don't do a one size fits all. So you can pick and choose exactly what you need depending on the size of your business and the processes that you need. Uh, online. Backups, everything is done here in Australia, quick to service, quick to respond. People are going to lose it, basically. But they're not going to lose it. They're going to retain it. They're going to keep it. That's what these guys do. So you don't get hacked by a bunch of mobsters from Mongolia. And I just said Mongolia just because it went with the mobsters in Mongolia. Okay, I could say another M word like Madagascar, but I don't want to talk about those uh, cartoons that come from there. I really like that show. So um, Tailored support options for businesses, allowing the clients to make their own managed uh, IT service. So please jump on to V-I-R-T-U-O-S-Y-S dot com dot A-U and have a look what they do and then support the supporters that support this podcast. Mention Vlad to them so they know who you are and then they can get a bit of feedback and they can get a discount. Hey, I need a coffee and I want a boutique. Bro, I want it with the crema and I'm looking like a bit of steez. Odyssey Coffee, the brainchild of the legends Maddie and Jim down into Melbourne and the Mornington Peninsula but have now moved into the big smoke of Melbourne. Get your coffee, please, from Odyssey Coffee and you tell me what you guys think about it. O-D-Y-S-S-E-Y, coffee.com.au, O-D-Y-S-S-E-Y, coffee.com.au. Email them admin at odysseycoffee.com.au. Um, check out their Odyssey Number no. 5, my favourite blend. They've got hot chocolate in there and they'll send it to you. They get different styles of coffee blends and stuff. It's always consistent and it's one of the best tasting long blacks that I've had. Uh, my missus loved it. She loves the long black, my missus. And um, they're in many restaurants and cafes and venues across Australia. Get them into yours or to your restaurant or to your um, cafe or to your house or to your office. Or just just get it for yourself, bro. www.odysseycoffee.com.au. Sponsors of the podcast. Support the sponsors. And mention Vlad so you can get a discount. Make sure you mention Vlad. If you email him or call him, uh, odysseycoffee.com.au, where you purchase all your coffee stuff. Metropolitan Stein, the best Stein in the world. When you want to fucking change your own kitchens and laundries and shit and all those cupboards that look like shit. Metropolitan Stone, cabinet making legends from Melbourne. 
bench top change of his brand new kitchens, old kitchens, uh, medium kitchens, kitchen facilities, laundries, bathrooms, cabinets, TVs, wardrobes, whatever you want, Maddie and the boys from Metropolitan and maybe girls, and Metropolitan Stone out here. 0425797488. 0425797488. Matthew at metropolitanstone.com.au and the website is metropolitanstone.com.au. Legendary sponsors of the podcast. Please get in touch with them and get yourself an update. Like you've done lip sips and tits with the Sydney Renault, get a Melbourne Renault on the kitchen. On the bathroom, put a TV unit, put a uh, something in, and mention Vlad, Med, mention the Distap podcast, because they're the supporters that support the podcast. So you need to support them, you know. All right, so go to www.metropolitanstone.com.au, follow them on Instagram, Metropolitan Stone, and support them. Mention Vlad. All right, Halden goes. What was Sydney like when you were growing up? See, it was different. That was for sure. Uh, this was growing up in the 90s, 80s and 90s. Uh, bro, all right, just speak about my local area. So there was, uh, there was a lot less people around, that was for sure. I don't know, 15 million people maybe? 20? Nah, there was a lot less. 15 to 17 million, I reckon. If you look up in the 1988, call it, uh, how many people would have been in Australia or in Sydney? It, w- it wasn't 5 mil. There would have been maybe 2 mil in Sydney. Three, maybe? It wasn't that much anyway. In my head, there wasn't that much. Bro, what was it like? So I grew up in a time where we were transitioning from like no computers to having computers. That was that was the period that I was growing up in. I had Nintendo, so computer games came out. That was massive. Like I can imagine now if computer games were coming out like and there was no computer games up until now, the, the, the up evil that there would be with people they're frying our kids brains my kids on cod all day they are saying the same thing now but like mario world is gonna make you stupid and all of that stuff and look it didn't work out like that i mean we are i mean everyone's quite stupid and one of my mates that i think is one of the smartest people he said people are going becoming more stupid um by the generation but at the same time you've got elon musk out here um building cars that don't need engines and don't need petrol and it's the greatest thing since sliced budek so i don't know where where the smartness is or whatever but computers came out and we used to play nintendo what else bro when i was growing up in sydney sydney was uh it was quieter bro it, it wasn't like as wild as this nightclubs weren't around um in the 80s or well, there were but there was a few my my dad used to go to nightclubs yeah there was nightclubs nightclubs were around i don't know where i said that they're not around i don't know why i said that but techno wasn't around so that's probably what i was thinking about house music techno that was like an 80s 90s thing i think it started to come around uh what else was happening bro we spent a lot more time like in parks picnicking you know with the family bunch of wogs char- hot charcoal barbecues a lot of chicken been marinated a lot of lebanese maronites around so a lot of maronites with marinade uh around there was a lot of massos greeks lebos crows serbs italiansi uh, at the local parks on the weekend there was more of that you could still go down to the local park now and find a, a bunch of wogs with a big blanket and a barbecue um for sure but that was that was kind of the style then maybe it was because i don't know what else are you gonna do go to westfield like westfield wasn't big back then it just kind of started consumerism was less consumerism was less but i still grew up in the in the the takeover of consumerism i I definitely yeah i did bro like i remember like mtv the rappers started uh, MC Hammer Pants, he would be out there doing, you know, oh, 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 I lose my money now. And it was all like pop from where, from my perspective anyway. It's a lot of pop, a lot of bike riding. Sydney was heaps more like out there. Now it's kind of coming back, the 90s, you know, it's kind of coming back. I've seen a lot of BMX bandits during the COVID time. Kids, they used to be at home a lot on the Nintendo or the PlayStation 5 or 6 or whatever it's come out. 
Now they're out on, on pushies. They're out on um, like mountain bikes. I've seen a couple of lazy little pricks out there with those e-bikes that pop an e-thing on it. His dad's probably a lawyer and he's paid an extra 1500 bucks to get an e-scooter so his son can grow tits. But we used to go around bike riding a lot. You break your heads open, break an arm, break a collarbone, break a leg. A lot of fights. Tried to make homemade bombs with bleach and Coca-Cola. Throw it at our enemies' houses. Uh, smoke cigarettes, uh, steal cigarettes from our parents, steal cigarettes out of ashtrays that were half smoked and smoke them, drink alcohol at eight years old, drink alcohol at 10, bash each other in the garage when your grandparents were at work, but they're apparently looking after you. They're not looking after you. They're going to the fruit shop because they make, they're making a stew tonight and they're just like, don't leave, just stay here. We're going to be gone for about three hours. So it was a lot more free. You would walk to school. I'd walk three, four, five k's to school. Um, kids, my cousin was walking to school like a kilometre away since kindergarten. So five years old, like my daughter, walking to school. My my daughter's school is two kilometres away. She can easily walk to school if she wanted to. She knows the way there. She can walk there, but uh, creating midgets out here, creating weaklings. But uh, I mean, also, I'd be shit scared letting a five year old out there. So, but back in the day, no. I mean, granted, he was walking to school with his eight year old sister. So. There's a little bit of a difference there. But there was a lot more kids walking to and fro school. Um, it was rougher. It was definitely rougher. I got chased down the streets many times by a pack of hooligans from my school. Um, idiots that would finish school, like 18-year-olds, they want to roll you for your shoes. Nearly got rolled at, at the train station a um, couple of times um, for my Jordans. Uh, you could speak your mind more in the 90s. In Australia, how was the show? You could speak your mind. You could um, you could say things that uh, are not politically correct and have a laugh about them uh, because you only said them and you didn't actually go and do anything. You didn't rape and pillage uh, people or ethnically cleanse anyone. You just said uh, f that guy because he's a fat whatever. And I'm not going to say it now because I'm trying to pay my mortgage. But you could say that stuff and people would go, ah, oh, relax, bro. He's not that bad. Leave him alone. You know, they'd defend him or they'd laugh with you. <laughs> yeah, he's a fat, uh, you know, or a fat, uh, uh, uh. depends how many syllables the, you know, race, culture or creed had. But that's, that's how it was back in the day. I mean, kill me if you have to, because that's the truth. That's how it was. Could you imagine there was a time where people used to go around on horse and carriage? Yeah. And there was a time also where people did bad things way worse than swearing at someone because they're of a certain background, way worse. But um, it wasn't that bad. It was a good time. I reckon the 80s and 90s were better than now. I, I definitely think there's many aspects of that time that were far better than now. But then when I look at now, it's safer, it's more boring, uh, and it's a bit more hopeless. So, and it's more dividing and politically unstable now. And especially now with the COVID and stuff like that, it's just created religions around this dumb shit. So I would, I would say the, back in the day... You know, it was all right, man. I enjoyed it. I didn't mind it. It was only the Michael Jordan, that, that um, the Chicago Bulls Michael Jordan thing, I forget what it was called, that came out on Netflix. That made me, for the first time in my adult life, want to go back to the 90s. It was the first time. I had never looked back. I'm a type of person that's securely in the present and the future, slightly anxious, in the present as well, want to make hay while the sun shines. And at the same time, slightly worried about everything that's going to happen in the future. Perfect guy to have a podcast. You don't want a guy going, oh, here you go on, man. I wish it was 20 years ago, man. You don't want that. Boring podcast. So more it's like, I was like, I'm a projectionist, let's call it. But yeah, that was the first thing that I would I was like looking back and going, fuck, the nineties was sick, bro. I love the nineties, you know? And I really did. We really enjoyed it. There was some real good comedy. There was some really fun um games and exciting stuff that was coming out. This pre internet. Then the internet came out in ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. By the time I got a computer, I was like ninety seven, ninety eight. That was exciting too, because that was the time I was tuning chicks. So you jump onto the internet. And you're tuning, and it's so exciting. Didn't get anything. Didn't get anything out of anyone. But you're on Merck or ICQ or something like that, and you log in. Oh, look at that. Jasmina's on there. Oh, look, Daniela's on there. Oh, look at that. Sophia's on there. Hello. How are you? I just saw you 40 minutes ago from school, ran home so I can get on this so quickly so I can just talk to you girls, and hopefully you guys like me. You don't really like me anyway. That was fun as well. 
I think everything was fun until um, until recently. I think maybe the last five, six, seven years has been a bit catastrophic. It really has. And um, and you can be as positive as you want. There's definitely a lot more unprecedented hardships that we've incurred. And now we're going into a, what's it called? A, a depression? No, what's it called? A recession? Like my hairline? Another hardship. Get ready for it. So, I don't know. That's about all, bro. Like, I don't know what else to tell you about it. It was good times. Loved it. All right. Questions for Vlad. Someone just wrote, Wog Weddings? Question mark. Tell us about Wog Weddings. Look, the modern day Wog Wedding is different to the way that my parents Wog Weddings. They used to get a local hall and call both sides of the family uh, Black Douglas uh, Scotch, the cheapest Scotch on every table. That was very good back in those days because we're mostly poor people. And they would get a band and they would make sure to try to keep both families at peace before one hero from one side and another hero from another side beat the living crap out of each other in the car park next to the Ford Fairlane. Many times I've been to weddings back in the day, they used to bash the shit out of each other. A bald guy with a comb over and another guy with more hair than God would beat the shit out of each other. These days, it's a little bit different than weddings. The groom has to be dressed in Tom Ford. The suit itself should be the price of an in-ground pool. That's just the groom. The the bride, forget about it. Her dress, uh, forget an in-ground pool, her dress should be an Olympic pool should cost that much because you don't want to dumb it down. You don't want to just have a normal suit from politics or tarot cash. Uh, You want to spend the cash. And uh, you know what the cars? Ferraris, Lambos, exotic supercars, Bugattis now. I've seen a couple with Bugattis. They can't sit in it. They just put the wife in there and the guy that owns the car has to drive the missus and this guy's with his mates in a Ferrari at the back while his wife's getting hitched around in a Bugatti. That's, That's fine. It's normal. You gotta pick an exotic location. Sydney's not enough. If you really want to hairstyle it up, you do it somewhere on the water. In Sydney now, forget the church. Uh, you get the priest to come to the park or the beach or the boat or the, the island where you are. You get the you fly the priest out to come out to the Cook Islands. You get him out there, he comes out, Orthodox priest with a huge cross on him, and he's catching multiple flights now. So he can go and bless you over there. Either that or you get your mate to pretend to be a priest and just go and sign up at the church on the way there and just go, listen, I'm, I'm going over to the cookies. We're going to get it done on the beach over there. Uh, there's that. I mean, inconvenience people is what you want to do. Uh, you don't want to say, we're doing it at Rockdale. Come along. We're just having a humble little wedding like that. No, no, no. You extend a mortgage or you get a loan or you sell your dad's house and you get it done properly. Do it right. You're not going to... You're doing this once, maybe, twice, dip, you know, if you're a wog, twice max. Aussies it could be five times. They don't really care, these guys. This is a water off a duck's back. All right, you need a cinematographer. Cinematographer, a guy's got to come with a crew of three to four people with HD, high definition, f- forget 4K, it's 9K, they're coming in, they're zooming, they've got drones, they're coming off helicopters, they're, they're going with dollies around so they can get all the action, but your auntie Slobodanka refuses to get out of the way. She's doing everything on an iPhone 8. She wants to film and take photos out of everything. She's spoiling the 42 grand that you spent on the cinematography. She wants to get really close in on the action for when the garter is being taken off the bride's leg. She's getting right in there. She's laying back. She's getting a nice angle. I've seen these people. They can't help but get the footage on the night because they want to look at the footage and send it to their friends on WhatsApp. They can't wait for the official thing to be sent to you on a YouTube link, which is the way that people are doing it these days. You know, just click. I can't see it. I can't see it. You don't send it. Click the link. Click the link. Click what link? What are you talking about link? Give me fucking photo. Give me photo. Give me video. I want to see three hours of people dancing around in a circle. No, click the link. And there's a, like a five-minute snapshot of the dancing. That's not enough for WOG parents. Are you serious? They want to see themselves go around in loops and have a look at the dresses and the facial expressions of all of their nemesis going around. Oh, there's Vera. Oh, there's Trianka. Oh, there's Bobica. Oh, my God. There's Slobodanka. Oh, wow. Look at her. Wow. She's got her tits done. Wow. She's got her tits. She's got them done. I can see. 
Rishi Feng Shi is, there's a lot of that going on in the WOG community. They love an assessment of the WOG video. That's the favorite. You give them a six hour wedding video, that's the best thing you can do for them. You give them a seven minute snapshot by Mr. Cameraman, something cinematography like that has come, like the new Avatar movie, it's the trailer for a movie. They don't want that. They want details. They want to see Jovan slide and hit the deck after a bottle of rakia. They want to see that in slow-mo. They pause that shit. <laughs> Get yourself a live MC. You need a, an MC. Someone like me, uh, I'm going to charge, but Rove Live, uh, it's some NRL player or a TikTok star or something. Get yourself someone that's kind of hot at the moment. That's what you want. So you can let them know that, you know, I'm mean, in business here. Me and the missus, we deserve this. And there's got to be a halftime show, uh, like the Super Bowl. You need Brazilian fire dancers, fire breathing dancers, some guy, people coming out like Magic Mike, four, four guys basically in just G-strings dancing for you. That's if you really want to get like left field on it and scare the shit out of everyone that came from, you know, the old, old country. You, you want to get Magic Mike there, put a pole up there in the middle for the halftime show at the wedding. If you're really rich, you're giving a gift out to everyone. Like, you, you're going to give them something, you know? Not back at the Bonbonieri back in the day, they used to have these lollies that you can crack every single one of your teeth on them. I don't understand what that was. The worst lollies attached to some little uh, ceramic angel. And then there'll be a lolly that uh, you could schmooke it. You'd have to suck it from Sunday till Tuesday for it to soften before you cracked it. And inside is like an almond. It was the weirdest thing ever, the Bonbonieri. Don't even give that. Give us a packet of M&M, something that doesn't require a dentist three days later, you know? <sighs> Let's not even go into the drug scene, bro. Every wedding basically is like yeah, fucking stereosonic these days. You know, you need security guards at weddings these days. That's what you need. You need a, you need a bunch of S&P Seckies to come over here and guard everything just in case something pops off. You know what I mean? After something's being popped. And then, you know, an after party. Call people to an after party. Some people now, they hire restaurants or they hire because they can. They've got the fuel to continue going. Not your auntie, Vesna, that has got rheumatoid arthritis. She's not going. But her son, Dimitria, or well, these days they'll just call him something like Zephyr. Zephyr, he wants to go out till five in the morning that night. He wants to celebrate. Yeah, I'm so psyched for you, bro. I'm so psyched for Stefan. He's not psyched. He's off his head. You know, he's got work the next day as an apprentice electrician, but he'll get there. He'll be a bit dusty. He's only 24, bro. Relax. He's got his life. That's a lot of wedding talk. I don't know. It is what it is, bro. We're, we're, we're a, a nation. Uh, it's almost, it's funny because Australia's small. So we're like a small, it's almost like a village, especially if, if you're a wog or whatever. And the Chinese have their own style, the Aussies have their own style. But us wogs, we, we love like outdoing each other. That is just something, you know. I don't know if it's just a Sydney thing. So if you're from Melbourne, uh, you don't have to have a go at me. You guys don't get the Bugattis. You guys do burnouts in VLs. But I would just say there's a, there's a like a bit of competition. How can we outdo each other? You know, did all the groomsmen wear Tom York? Uh, Tom York? Did all the groomsmen wear Tom Ford? Usually it's all the groomsmen are being dressed in Ferrari menswear hire and just the, the groom is coming out looking like something off a chessboard. But the rest of them, you know, $119 and buy your own shoes. 